Hello and a warm welcome to everyone. My name is Chris Power and I'm the CEO of the Canadian Patient Safety Institute. And this is Ron Goose, our board chair. We know trying out new platforms can be tricky. If you have any technical difficulties and need assistance, there's a help desk located at the first table on the first floor. If you double click on that table, you'll be able to talk with Remo experts to get you up and running. I hope that most of you were able to join us for the World Patient Safety Day celebration and the world premiere of Building a Safer System, our CPSI legacy documentary. If not, a recording of the session will be posted on our website within the next few days. We are incredibly excited about spending the next hour together, celebrating our past, acknowledging our present, and collaborating to propel us into the future. There's no question it's taken us a long time to get where we are today. And we are just a couple weeks away from amalgamation with the Canadian Foundation for Healthcare Improvement to form a new organization. And we thought it would be very important to acknowledge the legacy that Canadian Patient Safety Institute has created. So I'd like to give you a rundown of how the next hour will unfold. I warn you it's going to go really quickly. First, Ron and I will be joined by the board chair of the Canadian Foundation for Healthcare Improvement and the co-chair of our transition board for our new organization, Dr. Lynn Stevenson, who will bring greetings and provide a glimpse into the future of our amalgamated organizations. We will then be delighted to welcome our former CPSI board chair, Maura Davies, to lead us through a conversation with the four CEOs that have led CPSI over the past 17 years. We'll follow this with a networking event where you can join in on table discussions with other teams, old friends, and like-minded individuals. And finally, we will hear closing remarks from Donna Davis, the inaugural chair of Patients for Patient Safety Canada. It promises to be a busy hour, so without further ado, Lynn, please tell us what we can look forward to in the future. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Lynn Stevenson, um, and I want to welcome everyone that's joining us for not only across Canada, but around the world. So I am truly honored to have been asked to be part of this wonderful uh, event and celebrating the legacy of the Canadian Patient Safety Institute, particularly today, because it's the International Day dedicated to advancing patient safety. Many of you have had the opportunity to look at the documentary, Building a Safer System, that showcases the 17 year history of CPSI. So I want to join all of you in congratulating CPSI on their amazing work. On, on a personal note, I completely recall in the early 2003-2004, um, when CPSI was a fledgling um, organization, many of us that worked in the quality space at the time, and I was working at Fraser Health in BC, remember the dismaying uh, reports that came out, and we had high, high promise for this new organization. I have to tell you, having been on these files for 20 years, that promise was met and then fulfilled and then remet. And I think that that's a wonderful tribute to CPSI. Thanks to CPSI, one of the, the truly remarkable things is very common now to see patients involved in every aspect of this kind of work. And that was a real role model for mo many of us uh, in the field. That said, we continue to face challenges. You all are well aware of that. Um, and how fortunate that we actually have an opportunity here to move all of this agenda forward. So in 2019, many of you are aware that CPSI and, and Canadian Foundation for uh, Healthcare, CFHI, decided to actually pursue uh, an amalgamation where we would have the opportunity to I, I would say leapfrog a bit to use quality language, some of the work we've done together, uh, done as separate organizations. Uh, we think that will leverage our complementary skill sets because we have an enormous amount of synergy already, but we also have complementary uh, skill sets because not all of us do things the same. I think this is a tremendous opportunity for this country and for these organizations to continue the legacies they've already set. So we've done a fair amount of work, as you can imagine, and I just wanted to share with you some of our commitment and Ron and I as co-chairs as we move forward. So this is what our stakeholders have said to us. Be bold in actions to change the system. In other words, act. A lot of talking goes on, a lot of act. Be clear and focused about purpose. Look to the future. Strengthen diversity and inclusivity. 
share expertise and guide others and be agile and move quickly. So we have taken those um, pieces of feedback and embedded that in our thinking as we start going forward in our new strategy. That's why you ask stakeholders and I make a very strong commitment that we will actually be holding these up as our principles and guiding lights going forward. Uh, I know it's really important to celebrate legacy. So this is a little bit, I'm sure for all of you, uh, a bittersweet day to look back, to move forward. But I think you've done an enormous amount of work and have something to really be proud of in the last years. So I'm looking forward to hearing the insights from the past CEOs um, of CPSI. And I'll turn it over to, to you more now to set off the panel. And thank you very much again for the privilege of being able to join you. Thank you, and it's a, just a great pleasure for me to participate in today's legacy event and particularly to join some old friends uh, today virtually on the, the panel where we bring together the four CEOs, Dr. John Wade, Phil Hassan, Hugh McLeod, and Chris Power to talk a little bit about their experience as CEOs over these last 17 years, looking at some of the challenges that existed when they took the helm and some of the things that they're most proud of. So uh, I'd like to start, John, with you. You were involved really from the very beginning, in fact, before CPSI was formally structured. Can you give us a little history lesson uh, about those early days? Well, the early days go back to uh, 2001, when the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Canada convened a meeting in Ottawa at the time of their annual meeting because they were concerned about patient safety in Canada. It was probably provoked by the Institute of Medicine study from the United States to Air as Human, which outlined the, uh, the deaths and the adverse events that were occurring with much frequency in the United States. We also knew that the Baker Norton study had just been commissioned to look at adverse events in Canada. So the meeting were probably a hundred people. There were healthcare providers, administrators, federal, provincial uh, government people, and a, a number of private citizens who were concerned. Out of that meeting came a recommendation that we start a national steering committee, which I chaired, and to report back in one year. We did that. We formed uh, five committees, uh, measurement uh, and evaluation process committee, legal regulatory processes, uh, education and improved uh, communication. Uh, these the, uh, committees were all volunteers. They never met in person. It was all done, believe it or not, then in telemedicine. And they reported back in a year. Uh, at that time, uh, we took all of the, the recommendations and with the, uh, the help of uh, Pierrette Leonard and Carolyn Hoffman, we wrote the document, Building a Safer System. Uh, out of that, the first recommendation was that the Canadian Patient Safety Institute be established. So we had to write bylaws. We formed an original founding board. We got grants from the federal government and we established headquarters in Edmonton. We then did a national search and we were fortunate enough to recruit Phil Hassan as the initial CEO. Over to you, Phil. Well, thank you very much, John. Uh, I am pleased to be here today. As we started this journey, we had a very committed and excellent board, thank goodness, and a board chair, Dr. John Wade, uh, to cap it off, and an impressive CPSA team. We also had outstanding researchers led by Ross Baker and Peter Norton. They presented very early the magnitude of the patient safety problem in Canada and our urgent need to act. There was early receptivity and commitment by the leaders of and staff in hospitals to reduce harm to their patients. They knew what needed to be, that we needed to do something. The Canadian Medical Association and the Nurses Association were early partners identifying the need to reduce patient harm, as well as appreciating the need to create a no blame culture. Most importantly, CPSI engaged a group called Patients for Patient Safety. This group was pivotal to some of our early successes. One major breakthrough for the system was disclosing to patients when harm was accidentally done to them. 
having many effects, including reducing patient, uh, reducing accidental harm to patients, having positive impact on patient staff relationships, as well as reducing lawsuits. On the international side, we collaborated with the Institute for Healthcare Improvement under Donald Berwick's leadership, as well as with the International Society for Quality. We also began working with WHO, developing and implementing the surgical checklist. In addition to the hard work by dedicated staff and healthcare professionals across the country, these are but a few of our strategic actions, critical collaborations and vital partnerships as we successfully advanced patient safety in Canada in the first five or so years. I cannot say enough about the progress made in those five years and the subsequent 12 years. Thanks so much to all the professionals committed to the patients and their families, to my successors, Hugh McLeod and Chris Powers, and finally, to those many who assisted us in making significant improvements in the health system. Over to you, Hugh. Good day, friends. Um, arriving at CPSI as CEO in 2010, I saw a small organization with a small budget lifting a way beyond its weight. I saw a knowledgeable and focused board, a passionate and capable staff who came to work every day with a single purpose, to improve the Canadian healthcare system. Having no statutory power or legislative clout, I saw CPSI's key leverage was its organizational relationships. When CPSI partners succeeded with patient safety improvement, CPSI succeeded. A key indicator of CPSI's patient safety influence between startup and my arrival in 2010 was the number of provincial, territorial, and national organizations now in the quality and patient safety space. This positive outcome, however, created a very crowded quality and patient safety space. So a new cycle and CPSI's journey begins. We asked, we listened, we talked about how to elevate five activities, safer healthcare now spread and adoption, the patient voice, patient safety education support, research analysis and noise transfer of patient safety incident learning, and promotion and marketing of patient safety improvement. These conversations led to the creation of a new five-year business plan focused on four interconnecting strategies. To action the four strategies, a national patient safety consortium was established. The task given to them was bold and big because they were to create and drive a shared national action plan for safer healthcare for all Canadians. The patient safety vision created by Dr. John Wade and his team, the startup work by Phil Hassan and his team, created the key foundations that led to the national action plan and set the table for the next evolution of CPSI. Over to you, Chris. Thanks so much, Hugh, and thanks, Phil and John. You certainly have left wonderful legacies in the patient safety world and have made a huge difference. So, Hugh, the vision that you and your team had around creating the National Consortium, we finished that work, we tied a bow around it, we had huge success. I think it was unprecedented. We retired Safer Healthcare Now, we did a number of things, and we finished the work that you had started with Patient Safety Forward with four, and then it was time for us to launch a new strategic plan. What we were hearing in the re what we were reading in the research and what we were hearing around the world was that what people were doing in patient safety had been wonderful work, but it wasn't enough. We knew we had to do even more if we wanted to truly have the impact on patient safety. And so we launched a bold new direction for CPSI at call, and we called it patient safety right now. Not in six months, not in six years, right now. Enough is enough. We needed to change the face of patient safety in a major, major way. We know we needed a different approach. 
And we did this by demonstrating what works in strengthening commitment. So creating the evidence of what truly works in patient safety, and then working with patients, with the public. We really expanded our reach because we had always worked with patients. We still do so, so critical to the work ahead of us. But we wanted to awaken the public to what was happening in patient safety, not to frighten them, but to give them the tools in their tool belt to be active partners in their care and to keep them and their families safe. We continued to work with patients. We worked with care providers as we always had, but we reached out in a much broader and bigger um, and bolder way with our leaders from all walks of life in healthcare. So they were not only our leaders in the organizations, but they were um, elected officials, they were bureaucrats, they were policy makers, they were regulators, they were educators. We wanted to embed patient safety right into the fabric of the work that we were doing to really have impact. And we worked internationally, we continued the work, Phil, that you had started with the World Health Organization, and, the collaborate, and we became a collaborating center for patient safety and patient engagement. So much to be proud of over these last 17 years, and now we look to the future. Three federal reports told us, CPSI, you're doing amazing work, but you're really small, and it's difficult for you to have the kind of impact that we need on the patient safety front. So we decided to really um, create our own destiny as we worked with CFHI and decided that it was really important, as Lynn said, to bring our forces together. We're creating a new organization that's bringing quality and safety together, and we're putting them on steroids for impact. So watch out, world. Here we come. Thank you, John and Phil, Hugh and Chris, for that uh, look back. It, it, for many of us today, I think it gives us a sense of pride, certainly a sense of gratitude, uh, and maybe even uh, some emotions, because this has been such an amazing journey that many of us have been on together. All four CEOs, you're used to dealing with media, and uh, I'd, I'd ask you, though, not just to celebrate this legacy, but, but also to issue a call for action uh, as you give advice for the new organization. What would be your nine-second clip of advice as we move forward? John? Well, my advice would be, in a rapidly changing and evolving healthcare system, always remember, the patient first. If I may, it's be courageous, fearless, and hopeful. Listen very, very carefully to the patients and caregivers. Uh, building on John's comment, um, how and where is care is provided is ever changing. And therefore, my advice would be take action and be focused on behaviors that patients, residents, and clients. And I would say this is an amazing opportunity to create new with incredible impact. So to do that, you're gonna to need to let go to let come. Be open to possibilities, be fierce, and think big. The sky's the limit. Thank you so much. Uh, those are wonderful words of wisdom and they they definitely set the stage for all the exciting work that's yet to come. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. What uh, great reflections and perspectives, John, Phil, Hugh, Chris. Thank you so much for sharing your experiences and contributions in building a culture of safety in Canada. Before we conclude with Donna Davis, there's something special I need to, someone special I need to acknowledge, and that is our CEO, Chris Power. I may have to pause a few times as I give this, but uh, we are so grateful that all attendees today will join in to celebrate CPSI's legacy and also celebrate and acknowledge an outstanding healthcare leader who dedicated her career over four decades to better healthcare in Canada. Chris Power, our gratitude and well wishes are just a small token for all your dedication and contributions to better Canadian healthcare and have the impact even beyond the Canadian borders. CPSI and Chris's leadership revolutionized the way patient safety is addressed in Canada. Based on the work of the National Patient Safety Consortium, an in-depth collaboration of more than 50 governmental professionals, professionals uh, and patient groups, 
Chris introduced a new strategy called patient safety right now. A great phrase, absolutely great phrase. Chris has been outspoken and uh, an outspoken advocate across the country and around the world on the importance of demonstrating cutting edge research and strengthening the commitment to the principles of patient safety. In part because of this emphasis and Chris's knowledge, skills, and wisdom, CPSI was designated by the World Health Organization as a collaborating center for patient safety and patient engagement to carry out activities in support of WHA program, WHO programs. No small task, Chris. Thank you very, very much. Chris has held significant government leadership roles, which include the Canadian Health Leadership Network, co-chair Healthcare Can, chair of the Canadian Partnership Against Cancer, president of the Canadian Association of Health Services and Policy Research Board, member of the Federal Advisory Panel on Healthcare Innovation, also known as the Naylor Report, board member and colleges and Institute of Canada, and board member of Simulation Canada, and a member of the Canadian Institute of Health Research Governing Council. And I'm sure I'm only scratching the surface. Her exceptional governance experience also supported me in my role as chair of Maine Patient Safety Institute. And Chris, I couldn't have done this job without your mentorship, your leadership, and mostly your faith and support. Anything that I may have accomplished or noteworthy event as chair wouldn't have happened without your assistance. And I thank you very, very much for that. Two of the many awards and accolades highlighting her significant contributions over the last four decades are top 50, she included in the top 50 in Atlantic Canada, top 50 CEOs in Atlantic Canada, sorry, between 2008 and 2012. She was included in Canada's top 100 most powerful women in the public sector category Hall of Fame to 2010. Chris's loyalty and dedication for making patient safety a national priority does not go unnoticed, including her leadership to staff, stakeholders, and partners, even an aging chair, and even the people she might meet in airports and elevators in Canada and around the world. Companies throughout Canada and beyond our borders have invited Chris and welcomed her as a keynote speaker, panelist, or moderator at their conferences, and also a contributor at many of their research seminars. Chris, you've left your mark of wisdom with so many of us. And we'll miss your monthly power play columns. And I will miss our bi-weekly telephone calls. Or if I know you, it won't be long before I see you back in action, but on your schedule. And if you know me, you can expect to see my questions and requests for assistance in your email box <laughs> as they continue for sure. Over the past few weeks, a kudo board, which is a retirement card electronically, has been circulating through the virtual technology world. And this is just a small token of all our expressions for wishing you all the very best in your retirement life. So Chris, watch that inbox. That box, will, that card will be arriving shortly, if it's not already there. And Eleanor Roosevelt said, yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, but today is a gift, and that is why I call it the present. And I think what she means, Chris, is that thank you so much for your excellent work. Looking forward when our paths will cross again. But now it's time to celebrate and congratulate you on a job very well done. All the very best to you, Chris, on behalf of CPSI board, CPSI members, stakeholders, and patients. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for that, Ron. That was <clears throat> that was lovely, and and um, I will say it, it certainly has been a gift um, to work with CPSI. I've always been a champion of patient safety, but to be able to work these last five and a half years with such an amazing board, um, at such an amazing team of people who get up every morning just pumped to make a difference in patient safety and um, work so hard. As Hugh said, they punched way above their weight all throughout CPSI's history. So I just feel very blessed to be able to um, end my working career with, um, 
with such an amazing team and for such a wonderful cause. So thank you for those for those lovely words, and I will look forward to my card. Thanks so much. And I'll look forward to your emails, Ron. It won't be the same without them. So, so for the last word, I'd like to introduce Donna Davis. And Donna is a former co-chair from Patient for Patient Safety Canada. Donna used the tragedy surrounding her son Vance to build her own legacy of patient safety, emphasizing the importance of open communication between healthcare providers, patients, and families. Through Donna's efforts, a new protocol called Vance's Stop Sign now allows anyone involved with the case to initiate a review. A patient is not discharged or transferred until the concern is addressed. Donna, welcome, and over to you. Thank you so much, Chris, and thank you for your leadership. It has been absolutely marvelous, and I hope you have a wonderful retirement. So listening to the well-deserved accolades that CPSI has received from so many in the patient safety community, I sit here with a range of emotions, smiling broadly, shedding a few tears, and a huge lump in my throat. I am humbled and honored to be asked to represent Patients for Patient Safety Canada, and if I may be so bold, patients everywhere, in giving closing remarks for this event. I want to tell you how CPSI directly impacted the lives of patients and families, and the families of patients, pardon me, who experienced harm while receiving care intended to help them. Thank you, CPSI doesn't express it adequately. We give thanks every day for CPSI and the wonderful people who make up or have made up CPSI throughout the last 17 years, and I've had the privilege of working with almost all of them. Each and every one of you made CPSI what it is, a compassionate, caring center of worldwide leadership in patient safety. And personally, if Paula Beard is listening, I have to say thank you, Paula, for introducing me to the world of patient safety and the wonderful people of CPSI. CPSI, you heard what we had to say as patients and families. And for many of us, that was the first time someone listened to us. You felt our pain and recognized our need to help change care that had harmed us. You saw patients and families as the experts that had crucial first-hand knowledge to share. It spurred you on to ensure that the patient voice was represented on each CPSI working group and influenced those outside the organization to follow your lead. You realized, because we told you, and then led by example, that the patient voice has to be present at the very beginning of improvement initiatives and policy change, not brought in as a token measure partway through or at the end to rubber stamp the policy or product. To coin the phrase, a physician I work with told me at the time of Vance's death, you made us better, not bitter. You were the chauffeurs that enabled us, that enabled and guided us to speak at conferences, present posters at international events, sit at the table when new policies were struck, open the door to be teachers to the teachers. You cheered us on, you encouraged, encouraged us, you hugged us, you made sure we knew that what happened to us or our loved ones mattered. We should never forget that in the healthcare system, it is patients first. We have the most to lose when things go wrong. Your work for the last 17 years embodied that. We all have a light inside of us, and that light is hope and belief. We have the hope and the belief that this is not the end of CPSI, but a new beginning with great resources, great dedication, and great like-minded people who are on the same journey with the same destination in mind, every patient safe. And just in case that goal gets blurred in the business of restructuring or in your daily work, remember, remember 19-year-old Vance. Remember seven-month-old Matea. Remember 80-year-old Ambrose. 
remember 17-year-old Jessica and so many more who will forever stay that age. Remember Robin, remember Donna, remember Katka, and the others who live today, and despite their scars, are as devoted as CPSI is to making healthcare safer for all. You gave us a voice, you helped us heal, you saved us. Chris, we will be bold, we will be brave, and in partnership with this newly formed organization, we will keep striving for every patient's sake. I'd like to read you a poem that was written by Jessica's mom, Tanya. This is what CPSI has done for us. The door. Knocking, we stand outside. Many years we've stood, many years we've waited. And we cannot leave them now, voiceless and unheard. We cannot fail them. We cannot let them fail. So here we stand and stand until we knocked and waited like all the yesterdays until wide-eyed we are ushered in. As we cross the threshold, we wonder, had perseverance won or did resignation reign? Perhaps a little bit of both, but who cares right now, for we are in. We gather at their table, inclusion holding us within its warm embrace, two needed parts of a greater whole. And now, no longer without voice, they who speak, speak through us, and are finally honored well. And as for us, we gently smile, lay down our head, and weep. Stay well, everyone. Together, we will make it better. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. Safety, there's nothing compares to the strength, impact, and wisdom of the patient voice. If there's one thing that we have learned at the Canadian Patient Safety Institute is to believe in the power of the story and the human experience. Working together, we can improve the safety of healthcare in Canada and reduce the risk of harm to both patients and healthcare workers. In closing, I would like to thank all of you for being part of this incredible legacy event. You are most welcome and in fact encouraged to stay in our networking sessions after, for the next half hour after we close. After all, the Canadian Patient Safety Institute was built on collaboration. We can all be proud of what we accomplished under the CPSI banner and the part each of us has played. However, much more work is needed. CPSI will be ending, and that's sad. But patient safety efforts and focus will be continued, will be continued and very much enhanced. Celebrate the milestones of the past and look forward to the opportunities to the future. Please remember to join us for Canadian Patient Safety Week, which is when? You guessed it, August 26th to August 30th, or sorry, August, I did throw you a curve. October 26th to October 30th, and you can sign up still at the CPHA website. Thank you, merci, bonne chance, miigwech. Thanks so much, Ron, and on behalf of all of us at the Canadian Patient Safety Institute, thank you for your ongoing support and for your own work in ensuring that every patient is safe. Without a doubt, CPSI has achieved what it set out to do. By trying new approaches, focusing on our strengths, and working together, we know that our new organization will make the Canadian healthcare system safer for all health workers and patients. Thank you all for being part of this journey with us. Please stay around and enjoy connecting with friends over the next 30 minutes, and um, really enjoy your time. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you. Stay safe.